press menu now. Ever since 2019 started, I've been seeing a heavy increase in 2000s nostalgia. It makes sense too considering the 2000s, 80s nostalgia was all the rage, the 2010s, 90s nostalgia was all the rage, and I feel like now's the time for people born in the late 90s and early 2000s like myself to really look back at the decade and see all the cool things there were back then. We got really cool game consoles, games, awesome movies, TV shows, music, it was a really good decade for entertainment, and I feel like it brought us the best Nintendo system, the GameCube. My favorite Nintendo system is the GameCube because of one thing. It utilized almost all of its IPs in fun and unique ways. This was the last time we got an F-Zero game and a proper Star Fox game, and it would take years to get some of the other IPs. And even the existing ones, they did so many cool things with Mario, it's just such a great system. I would say the Wii is a close second, Switch is too new to tell. However, this video really isn't about the GameCube so much, but it is kind of GameCube related. This is about the Nintendo LogeNet GameCube controller. Now this is something I have fond memories of, even though I never got to play one of them. So if you don't know anything about LogeNet, they were a service back in the 90s and 2000s that provided entertainment in hotels. Things like movies, music, games, and they always had controllers. Now the first one they had was an SNES one, then they had an N64 one, there were actually two variants, one that had a GameCube style joystick and then the other had the regular, and then there was a GameCube one to finish it off. The reason I never got to play any of these is because they were super expensive. You would have to pay $6 an hour to play games in your room. Now, I'm not sure if I always saw the GameCube controller since I did go to a lot of hotels on vacation during the 2000s, but I always remember this. The first second my family and I got into the room, I would always see a game controller. Whether it was the N64, GameCube, or SNES, I'm not sure because I didn't really play games back then, but I always wanted to play them because of that reason. And before I could even access the menu, my dad unplugged the cords so that way I wouldn't be able to plug it in either because I couldn't reach, or wouldn't figure out where it went. Then fast forward to the 2010s, where I became a Nintendo fan. I got my DS in 2009, and then got into Mario and Nintendo in 2010. And when I went to a hotel in 2011, it was specifically a residence inn, I saw one of these, and I thought, wow, is this a lost Nintendo system or something? The reason I thought that is because if you look at the back, it says copyright 1997 Nintendo. Now I knew the GameCube came out in 2001, so I thought it was something obscure or lost like the IQ player, but sadly, that's not what it is. This is just a way to play GameCube games and control your TV from your hotel room. What these buttons do right here, is it would also function as a remote control for the TV, which I was able to do because that didn't cost money. So you'd be able to order something, you'd be able to select, reset the menu, and then I'm not sure about these ones. But of course, everything else is similar to the GameCube. Now, what you would do to play the games, there was a menu for games, you'd go and choose your selection, and if you thought the selection was just bare bones, you know, stuff like Smash Bros, Mario Party, maybe stuff that's just regular sports games or party games, you'd be surprised because the lineup was actually really good. There were a ton of games for it, like Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Mansion, and there was even stuff further into the GameCube lifespan, like Chibi-Robo and The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. That is really surprising for something that most people didn't use. I know I never got to play any of the games, and a lot of other people didn't either, because I can barely find any footage of people using these on YouTube. I found one where someone was actually using an N64 LogiNet controller, but I can't find the video now and it was pretty grainy. It sounds like a lost media thing. But these were pretty cool, the selection was good, and because no one played them, they're in pretty good condition. Now I'm going to compare this to a regular GameCube controller. I'm going to use the black one right here since it's the same color and it's the easiest to compare. Yeah, it's seen better days, I know. But comparing the two, obviously they have the same layout and they're the same size. And of course there are the extra buttons here to control the TV. But there are also some more subtle differences. The Nintendo logo is right here. Well, it's not there on the GameCube. There is also a pretty major difference. 
This one right here has a rumble motor. This one doesn't. Now, of course, if you look at the back, this one's gonna say, controller not compatible with any home system. If removed, a 90 or 29.95 service charge will be added to your room bill. And then there's a the copyright stuff, which is completely different. Well, yeah, this thing is not compatible with the GameCube because this uses a phone cord. Now the cord is probably like 20 feet. It's insanely long. But this would use an RJ11 phone connector, which is not compatible with a GameCube, or really anything for that matter. If I wanted to theoretically use it, I would have to make an adapter of some sort. It is possible, but I don't have the electrical skills to make one. But this will not work on the GameCube. It won't fit. But of course, this one's going to work. Also, another subtle difference I noticed is the paint job on this is a matte finish. It's just a plastic that's a black color. But this right here, it's painted on. So that is a pretty interesting difference. I wonder why they went for that. I mean, with the Smash Bros controllers, I can see why, because people are going to be playing those all the time. But these, they kind of faded into obscurity, because who's going to pay $6 an hour to play GameCube games? And unfortunately, that caused the demise of the company. Because no one really wanted to pay $6 an hour to play the games, or pay to watch movies or use entertainment in the hotels, LodgeNet went out of business in late 2012, and they haven't had anything like this in hotel rooms since. Do I think they'll ever return though? Probably not. No matter how much nostalgia you have for this thing or I have, this is a relic of its time. We've come to a day where phones are widely accessible, and they're almost as powerful as your computer, and the difference between portable gaming and console gaming isn't as different as it was during the day with a Game Boy and a console like the GameCube. I feel like it was more of a product of its time than anything, but it was still a cool thing and a nice collectible to have. This is something I've wanted for a while, but I couldn't justify paying more than a GameCube controller to actually get one since, you know, you'll have to make an adapter for it to work, which I don't have the skills to make. But this is a pretty cool collectible, I got it for a good price, so yeah. That's the history of the LodgeNet GameCube controller. If you have any experience playing one or seeing them, I'd love to know. And if you've seen them past 2013, that was the last time I saw them, I'd love to know. Anyways, thanks for watching, and keep calm and da-da on.